Yo, Mass Bomb families, welcome to kind of back to school night 2020. I am the math proficiency development teacher for ninth grade students at Mass Bomb. My name is Mr. Thomas. Basically, I'm just going to walk you through my syllabus like I did with the kids first day of school, talk about my class policies, how I grade, etc., etc. So the course is math proficiency development, math PD for short three main purposes to the course. Number one, we want to be a bridge from elementary-like thinking into high school and beyond thinking. So I told the kids I'm going to be hitting them with some stuff that for some of them might seem, oh, I already know how to do this. This is elementary. And I might also be hitting them with some stuff which is like, whoa, why are you, why are you giving me this advanced work? Um, I don't feel like I'm ready for it. I'm going to, I'm going to bridge the whole spectrum I told them to enjoy when an assignment is easy for them, when it's something familiar with. Uh, but we really want to get them to be thinking about the numbers, about the data, about the information, about the problem-solving processes at a deeper level, and that's what we're shooting for. Second, build foundations that they're going to need in other classes, whether that be math classes, so their algebra one and two, their geometry classes, their senior level math classes, but also looking at science, also looking at some of the vocational shops. I talk with teachers and get their input. Uh, shop teachers, science teachers will say, Mr. Thomas, we wish the students already knew how to do such and such before they got into our class. So I'm going to be working with some of the mathematical skills that lead up to and get used again in later courses. And then the last main big purpose of the course is specifically to support Algebra 1, uh, which is a separate math course that they also take this year. They have to pass a proficiency exam at the end of the year called the Keystone exam. We want to we wanna have them ready for that. This is what I expect behaviorally. This will be in school and also online. You got to follow school rules. So I make that rule number zero because it's obvious. My number one rule is what I tell you to do, you got to do. Obey me. I do tell them that there's an exception to this rule in the world. Not every adult has their best interest in mind all the time. And if, if I or some other adult was ever to give them a direction that they think you don't have a right, like you're not, that you're, you're stepping out of your area of authority, uh, their job is to talk to you parent and talk to my bosses or the bosses of the teacher right the principal vice principal say hey uh, mr thomas told me to jump out a window he can't he can't do that right so i call it rule number one because it's my most important rule i tell the kids and i'll tell you when if kids ever get in trouble with me it's going to be for breaking rule number one because as long as they can remember rule number one if they forget any other rules i can remind them Right, I can remind them if they remember. I gotta, I gotta follow Mr. Thomas's direction. They start messing up somewhere. I'm gonna give them the warning. Right, I'm gonna say, "Yo, you need to fix such and such up." Uh, if they don't at that point, that's when you might be getting the call or the email, or called in for conferences and whatnot, depending how egregious the offense is. Okay, mother rules. They need to be in class on time, prepared to learn. Like, you can't can't get your education without doing it. They need to be respectful of their classmates. And I I will tell them this too, and I know that some of you probably have a different policy when it comes to respect. My policy is there's a certain level of respect that you give to other people just because they're human, even if for whatever reason you feel disrespected by them. There's a certain level of honor that you owe to someone else. You don't have to like them. Uh, you don't, for the most part, even need to interact with them. But you do need to, and I spell it out right here, refrain from insulting, putting them down, hurting them, and that will be physically, emotionally, their stuff. Don't mess with their stuff. Lastly, take care of the classroom and equipment. Obviously, that applies more when we're in school, but if you're borrowing stuff, borrowing a Chromebook and whatnot, they need to make sure they, they take care of that stuff. Okay. Grading. All of your teachers are going to have the same basic breakdowns for grading because it gets set for us. So 40% test, 30% performance, 20% classwork. 
10% homework. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I twist that a little bit. So uh, I'm not gonna give a lot of big tests. I might give no big tests, right? The, the thing that I'm gonna put in the test category is gonna be, uh, there's a computer-based program requirement with our course. And it's a program called Imagine Math. Uh, they have to complete a certain number of lessons in that program each week. What the program is supposed to do is individualize things a little bit and try to, it doesn't always do the greatest job of it, but try to hit them at their level. So different kids are working on different lessons at the same time. That's the 40% category is about half of the points. And I do ask them when they're engaged with that program, I say, you got to turn in notes to me, right? You need to be taking notes while you're working with that. The second biggest category for me, performance typical everyday assignments are going to go into that category. Anything that I'm assigning on a typical day, that's where most of my, my points will go. Homework will be stuff that I do uh, less often. And so that'll be like test prep stuff and anything that doesn't fit into the <laughs> to the categories above it uh, will go into that category. And then my top one, classwork is an effort grade. Are you here? Are you prepared? That means did you do what you needed to do before you got to class? Did you bring the stuff that you needed with you? Are you participating? And are you doing all this stuff with a purpose or at least doing a good job of faking it? I don't want you showing me the face that says, I don't care. I don't want you showing me the face that says, uh, I don't, I don't want to be here. I'm going to keep my arms folded and I'm going to hate, I'm going to hate school today, right? Uh, you got to, you know, same as on the job later in life. Uh, you might be having a bad day, but you still project, I'm here for a reason. I'm here to serve the customers, et cetera, et cetera. Overall grades, you get 90 out of those 100 points. You got yourself an A, 84B, 74C, 64D, and hopefully we don't go below that. But obviously, F is, yeah, F is an option for uh, those that don't do what they need to do. Makeup work, I do accept it. It's not going to be worth as much points. Kids need to try to do their stuff on time, right? A lot of times I will have one lesson, build on another lesson, build on another lesson. And if they don't do that first one, they kind of stuck uh, when it comes to the new stuff. Extra credit, I don't give it. No extra credit at all. If a kid doesn't like where the grade is, what they can do is go back to stuff that they were already supposed to do and turn in their missing work to me. If somebody, this will be extremely rare, but if somebody has finished every assignment that they owe me and they still don't like their grade, then they and you can have a conversation with me about, yo, we got zero missing, zero missing assignments. We want this grade higher. What can we do? That will be an individual conversation at that time. But if you don't have zero missing assignments, you got stuff you could do to move your grade up if you don't like it. I'm going to read these two things that I put at the bottom of my syllabus. This is a big deal to me. Grades are built by habit. If partway into the quarter or year you don't like your grade, then you need to adjust your daily actions. We don't fail students who convince us by their actions they want to pass. Last quote. No one fails as a result of struggling. In fact, it is only those who do not struggle who can possibly fail. Try, try, try. Ask for help when you need it and try again. Look, I have been committed for years. If a kid shows me, Mr. I'm trying daily, I'm trying, then I will make sure that the numbers work out. I'm not going to fail somebody that is showing consistent effort, okay? But that also means on the flip side, if at the end of the quarter I'm putting down an F, I have not been seeing effort and, and stuff needs to change, right? Habits need to change. Hopefully that's, a, that's, a, that's at least an introduction to me. 
if you have questions, please reach out. Um, and we try to work through things. I look forward to teaching your child. Look forward to meeting you hopefully one day in person. And let's make this a, a great four years finishing up with a high school diploma and a graduation ceremony and then moving out into the world to be someone, to be something extraordinary.